What uh, stood out most to you about Ruben Bain's performance? Uh, just how he manhandled him, you know, for to be that young uh, in a P5 game like that and him being able to throw people around, you know, um, great power, strength, twitch. Uh, gonna be a really great player for his finish. Uh, Leonard Taylor also popped on Saturday. I guess you can talk about the entire defensive line because that was a heck of a performance, especially against the run. Yeah, Leonard was in his wheelhouse. We played him a lot at the nose and we played him over the center and made him knock him back and then moved him from that spot, either right or left. And uh, it was a good game plan for him. Uh, so it kind of played to his strengths, which was really good. He showed up a lot, but the whole front, and he really played well, backers and everybody was included. It seems like you had a wrinkle with the front. Can, mm -hmm. can you just take us through that and the impact that made? Yeah, we went 3-3 three, three set. Um, you know, we've been short on some defensive linemen, we've been beat up a little bit, and I felt in this game, probably Sunday night after watching them on film, in my head, I'm like, okay, we got to get as much speed on the field as we can. So I started thinking, if we put three linebackers on the field with three down linemen, we can do more. We can drop in coverage differently. We can match up on tight ends. We can bring different pressures. And I've done it before, but it's been a while back that I did it. But it was kind of the same situation. People gave me a lot of motions, a lot of empty sets. And when you get empty sets, a defensive end can't go out there and play a guy, but a linebacker can. So just watching the film, breaking them down, like, you know, this is the week. They've been working on us for two weeks for what they've seen because they had an open week. I say it's a perfect time to jump into it because when it gets to Saturday night, they haven't seen anything that we're going to do. And the kids picked up on it. And a lot of it was similar, but some of it was different. I played a lot more bare with it. Um, so they carried out the game plan well, and uh, they did a great job executing. Coaches did an unbelievable job of getting them to buy into it. and they had to, Yes, some people had to be unselfish. They didn't play as many snaps as you know they would have with a regular front. But uh, I thought it was best for us to have a chance to win, and and we executed it really well. What have you seen on film from Virginia's offense? Well, you know the last game really sticks out. Uh, quarterback played really good. Transfer kid from Monmouth, of course, and uh, a lot of one hand catches. Uh, they played up to the challenge, and and. Uh, they were good at what they do. They get in a lot of empty sets. They get in some open sets, and the quarterback runs draw. And he's good at running the draw. He's a little jitterbug up in there. So uh, we're going to have our hands full for sure. So uh, just well executed last week. Early in the year, not as much, you know. So we know we're going to get their best game, though. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, obviously, you guys are treat every opponent the same, every, treat every opponent with respect. But, you know, it seems that it might sneak in that this team, you know, a week ago was had one win, but now that they've beaten the team that you guys know is a handful, you know, does that kind of bring it to us of like, yeah, these guys can play? No, Monday's a Monday, Tuesday's a Tuesday, Wednesday's a Wednesday. Our preparation's the same every week. Um, you know, last week was a good practice and we played well the week before. We we played a half a game as good as you probably could against that quarterback that was playing against North Carolina. And then we got on our heels a little bit, and the game changed. But each week we prepare the same well. We play with great energy, so it really doesn't matter about the opponent. Uh, we just try to focus in on what we do well and practice the way we need to practice. And I like where we're at, and I'm, I'm glad they beat North Carolina, you know, because it's, it's not a team that they're going to look over, but we didn't look over Bethune. We didn't look over any team we've played this year. So I think we've been very businesslike. Obviously, Ruben's having a lot of success as a true freshman. Uh, most of it's been on the outside. What does the future hold for him? Does he? Do you see him as a defensive end in the big picture? Does he eventually go inside? Maybe as you get you know pieces back and and you know maybe advance. I, I don't know. I'm yeah. not putting any limitations on Ruben. I do think probably if he has a future past college, and he may trend toward the inside. Right. You know. Uh, but right now, I like him where he's at. He's he's big and powerful, and the, the offensive tackles weren't used to seeing that. They're used to seeing guys try and run around them and do counter moves. And now they've got a big guy on the edge. You know, you know, in the NFL there was guys like Bruce Smith, and there was 
uh, Reggie White, who gave people problems on the edge because they were so big. Uh, Ruben's not that big, but I mean, he is brings the same type of skill sets, strength, power, and twitch. So I don't know. We're just gonna let it play the way it's playing. You guys had some key stops when they got inside the five in the Clemson game. What did you like about the way the defense kind of bowed up? And they just showed grit, you know. I, the last drive, I, I really wasn't worried too much. After we scored, I was more worried about the other one. I was worried about when we, you know, when the first overtime, I was a little bit worried about that one because I didn't want to put our offense in a situation where they had to make a touchdown. I wanted to hold them to field goal, so I was a little bit more nervous with that one. But the second overtime when we scored and made the two-point conversion, I really didn't think they could score on us twice. And when it got to the fourth down, I even felt like, okay, if they score, they got to come back and score twice in a row on the fourth play and the overtime and the two-point play. And I just didn't think that they could do it the way we were playing. And, uh, and it worked out that way. But we definitely had a lot of attitude down there. And that's what it takes. you got to have some grit. And uh, we haven't been great in those situations, you know, uh, this year. We've kind of when people got down there, they punched it in. But uh, we were locked in, and, and they played well. I was so proud of them. Can you talk about the, the play that Flag made to seal the game? Yeah, uh, we work on it like different backfield sets, whichever way the backfield, the running back set, we'll scream a guy off the edge to chase him and we'll gap exchange with that linebacker. They happen to go to the big field with it. They actually had a guy that was ineligible into the boundary and we really needed to take the safety and blitz him off the edge on that side because the guy, we didn't need to cover him because he wasn't eligible. And we didn't get that accomplished. So if they would have given the ball, we were soft into the boundary because we didn't set the edge with a blitz. But he pulled it. Thank God, he pulled it. And the best thing Flag did was when, when Wesley was trying to chase, he went forward. He took the air away. He didn't work sideways, and he made the quarterback have to belly back. And when he belly back, he gave us enough room. Even you could see uh, Wesley running, and James came all the way from the other side and was tracking. I feel Flag would have missed, and James would have still gotten to the goal line. So we had three guys really running to the ball. I was real. We all were. We was all really worried about the horse collar because you could see him tug on his shoulder and then he was smart where he didn't, you know, pull him down like that, but a uh, very instinctive play by Flag, you know, uh, older guy that's played a lot of football and for a guy to make a play like that, it's really who you want to make the play. There's a guy that's, you know, kind of been here a while and he's had his ups and downs and that was one of the biggest ups you can have right there beating Clemson at home in double overtime. Like you said, Corey's kind of had some ups and downs. What, you know, how has he been developed, you know, he, since the beginning of all camps, He's working, man. He works. He don't complain. He takes coaching from Coach Nicholson, and uh, all those guys have gotten better. Wesley's gotten better. KJ's gotten better. But Flag's been patient when he's in there. He's played well, so he keeps getting better. Of course, Kiko gets get, keeps getting better, and uh, you got to have depth at linebacker. And we needed it because we were playing with three starters this week, and we had to have guys in rotation. So Flag was one of the guys that had to play the mic and the wheel. And uh, so you got to do a lot of different things when you're playing two positions, especially in that 3-3 stack stuff we were doing. And Mario mentioned that um, actually Kelly's like the out for the remainder of the year. Um, just who do you see stepping up in his plays? And obviously Jafar's played a lot. Um, who else do you want to see step up? Feeling that's uh, I don't know. I don't know who's going to step up. We'll, we'll figure it out. And if we got to move some guys outside, we'll do it. Uh, if we got to generate some more fronts with different things, we'll do that. So. We want to play the best 11. You know, that's the most important thing. I think when you're a coach is you want to have the best players on the field that you can. And sometimes it's the most healthiest player. So we'll go through this week and then we'll decide on what we'll do at that position. But, uh, you know, we've got different, we had different choices and that's a good thing. Hey Lance, they were uh, targeting you, not you, but they were targeting you guys on the outside, on the perimeter mm -hmm. with the deep ball more than we've seen anybody do this season. Your thoughts on that? I mean, you've got some games coming up. I know you're looking one week at a time, and I don't really know who Virginia's receivers are, but uh, you've got some games coming up, I know, with some big receivers and, and things like that. Did that have a resonating effect at all? Uh, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. You can't double cover people and not have a guy playing the run. So uh, there's some different mismatch, mis different matches we can put in there, but they have to prove they can hit them. And, it's a 50-50 ball. They've started hitting them. You got to do different things. You might have to switch guys, but 
the guys that we got, we love them and they'll keep competing and one game at a time. I'm not worried about down the road. I'm worried about practicing on the moral and, you know, this weekend playing Virginia. So it is what it is. And uh, when we get to games where they have big, big receivers, we'll deal with it then. With their production they had a tight end, is there things to clean up there or is that a guy just kind of nah, man, that guy made some great catches and some great throws and um, Anytime a tight end's going free like that and you're in great coverage and they're making plays, you just got to kind of tip your hat. We put a backer on him, put a safety on him. Uh, at the end, on some third downs, we put another DB on him, uh, a corner on him, but still he, he had big, you know, he's a big guy. He had length. So uh, we felt like we had to try to make the tight end beat us because we thought they had some good wideouts, and especially with a kid coming back that was healthy. So we felt like if we could make it a tight end game, it was better for us. And, uh, you know, I thought he bobbled it, but it is what it is. I thought we had a safety as well, so. But I'm not an official. I know that because of the week before, you know, they threw flags on me, so I stayed off the field and didn't complain this week. How's uh, Josh Horton developing? I and mean, he's a big guy, true freshman. Um, is there, can he help you this year? Uh, he's getting better, but when you don't come in the spring of your freshman year, it's hard. There's so much to learn. You know, you go through summer, you go through fall camp, and then you start playing, and your reps start getting cut down. You go in a scout, so it's just hard, whereas the difference between him and Ruben is just from the learning purpose, Ruben was here in the spring. So he went through spring football. Ruben did not look like he does right now this spring, you know. Uh, but they're going through a spring, they're going through summer, then fall camp, he's continued to get better. So. Harden's going to develop when he develops. Uh, he has gotten better and he's played a couple snaps, but uh, not just not there yet. But we got to keep getting, him, you know, getting him closer and closer because we might need him down the stretch. And how about the freshman linebackers? You had, you know, they the, played some special teams. Uh, hadn't played a lot, you know, on defense except mop up duty. But they've gotten better. They've really done a good job on the scout team, the, the look teams they call them. So uh, they've done a great job, and they're, they're going to be some good football players. KJ, I think, played his most snaps of the season. Was that a function of the 3-3? The three, three yeah, because we started Wes. Wes is what we called our Hank. He really took over for the jack into the boundary, and then KJ played the wheel, and Kiko played the mic, and then Flag came in and played both. So they got a bunch of snaps, and we needed them to. And I was kind of a little worried because they play on special teams. So there's a lot of snaps they played the other night, but uh, they held up well. I was proud of them. They, they did what we needed to do. Jared playing at end. Yeah. How do you do with him? He did great. You know, a lot of times he played the four because we was in fours a lot. We'd get in fives and they was slanting and angling. So Jared's probably more of a three tech or a four technique anyway. So he's really a little bit further out in the guard, the better he is. And uh, it fit really well what we did. You know, him and Ruben are both kind of those guys that kind of can do a little bit of both. So. Anything else for Coach Kendrick? Um, oh, uh, how, how tough is it to for your defense to defend and practice for short Smith? We don't go against him a lot. <laughs> Thank God. We'll go against the offense probably about uh, 15 plays a day at the beginning of practice. We'll go like maybe tempo against them and then we'll go a, a team run play action. And then there's always some other type of team that we do. So it's, you know, it's roughly about four and four with the ones about 12 to 15 and then with the two so he's mostly on the outside we, he didn't play in the backfield against us at all but he's very talented all the wide receivers are we have a hard time with our wide receivers uh, they're very athletic they can run really really well so we get a lot of good practice against our offense what do you think of up to corey and Darryl and jane in coverage on saturday uh, they did well. We gave up, you know, we gave up a couple balls. Jaden gave up, uh, you know, one of the fade routes. But other than that, he challenged it really well. So Corey gave up that last one, which I was kind of disappointed in. But, you know, he always comes made a big hit on the quarterback, you know. Uh, and then Porter's been solid the whole time. He hadn't really been challenged as much. But when he is, he always knocks the ball away. So they've been a solid group. They're very smart, all three of them. So. Uh, it really helps them out. They study film really well. And uh, we've been beat up a little bit at the free safety. Cam hadn't been healthy. I mean, he's been having a bad ankle. He comes off of, you know, the concussion deal, and then he's had a bad ankle since. So yesterday, 
Today said, sorry, this morning was the, the best I've seen him with his ankle. He wasn't taped up, he wasn't hobbling, so I think he'll have a good week this week. He'll be more like the old Cam this week. It's been a while. Why do you think Porter isn't getting challenged much? Is it luck of the draw or is he? No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe because he plays the left side. We played a lot of right-handed quarterbacks, you know, because we don't play a field on a boundary. We play a right and left. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe quarterbacks and in the boundary throw more fade routes to the right. I don't know. Uh, he's got a lot of in-breaking routes, and he's broken them up. So knock on wood, hopefully he keeps playing well. But I, I don't know that.